In this video, we're gonna show how to retrieve this Berkeley Gulp Shrimp to maximize your fish catching results. I'm also gonna talk about the pros and the cons of this bait. We're not affiliated with this company in any way, so I'll share some candid feedback as you'll, as you'll see, both good and, and bad. And as far as the retrieve, you know, we're, we're by a pool here and I have it rigged up on the rod, so we're gonna show some underwater footage on exactly how it should look and how you should retrieve it, again, to maximize your results. So as for the pros, is first of all, the, the scent, right? So I don't know what it is about gulps, but their scent is actually really good. It does seem to, to generate strikes. So far, it is the only soft plastic that I found where I can just cut off little small chunks, you know, about like that size, put it on a little small hook, throw it on the grass slat, and catch all sorts of bait. You know, that's, that's actually how I catch most of my pinfish now, and I have a, a video that I'll link below to show you exactly how that, uh, how that works. But uh, that's, so those fish are literally responding to the scent alone. It's literally just a square of plastic that they're eating. I've even caught redfish and, and trout doing that and snapper. So the scent that they have in these is, is surprisingly good. The other pro is that you know, they are actually fairly easy to rig as long as you do it properly. That is, that's the name of the game. It has to be rigged properly. If it's not rigged properly, it needs to be centered. It, it needs to be very aerodynamic. If it's not rigged properly, it's not gonna work properly, but they are you know, fairly soft so that you can get the, uh, the hook in there pretty easily as long as you, uh, you know what you're doing. And I'll have a separate video on that as well so you can uh, see exactly how that's done because that is essential. If you don't rig it properly, it's not gonna work. So now for the cons, and one big one that's, uh, that's at least fairly recent is that they, they seem to have switched their, uh, their actual material. It used to be tough. Now, uh, this material, it's, it's pretty soft. And so that, you know, the scent is, is very, you know, definitely attracts uh, fish. So a lot of pinfish and smaller fish will just be pecking at it, especially if we're fishing around grass flats and oyster beds. And so just by them pecking at it, a little small pinfish can, can literally start tearing off chunks and eventually you're gonna left with an, be left with a nub. That'll still catch fish though, as long as the action in the water is good. Uh, a tailless bait can still work really well. Actually, I've actually caught some of my best fish with, uh, with tailless baits, because as long as the action's good, it's still okay. But just be mindful that your, the amount of fish caught per bait uh, when using these isn't as good as what it used to be. Hopefully they do make a change and get it back to what it was. The other con is just the price itself. Like these are typically about a dollar a piece, which is uh, pretty expensive for a soft plastic, especially when it's gonna get torn up pretty quickly. The final con is shrinkage. And, and these baits, they're, they're water-based. So the pro on that is that the scent is actually throughout the entire bait. And that's why the scent is, that's one reason why the scent is so effective. It'll last a long time. The scent literally, it goes throughout the entire material. But the con though of that is that if you do leave it out in the sun, it'll, it'll eventually shrink up, right? Cause that water will, uh, will evaporate. And, and this material, it'll be like a, maybe like a quarter the size, if not even smaller, it'll be like rock hard. And obviously once that happens, it's pretty much useless. Uh, you can put it back in water and it'll expand some, but it just, it'll never be the same. So you do have to be mindful that when you are using them, uh, as soon as you're done, take them off the hook and put them back into the, uh, into the package that it came in. That way, you know, it stays, uh, it stays in, the, in the proper state. You never want it to dry out and, uh, and it's easy to forget. So when you are using those, just make sure that you, uh, that you do take care of them properly. All right, so now for showing the retrieve. And, uh, and again, these baits, you know, these tails, they don't have much wiggle or anything. So you pretty much have to, you're in charge of making them look, look good, making them look appetizing to the fish. And so when fishing in an area that is, uh, that's like a sandy bottom, uh, which is where these are really effective, is I, I just cast it out, let it sink all the way down to the bottom, and I'll do a double twitch. So double twitch, pause. And so watch this rod tip. I'll do a double twitch and pause double twitch and pause. And what that does is that lifts it up off the ground a little bit, kind of like a scared shrimp, and then it'll sink back down. And typically they'll hit on that downward motion. So we'll do it again, Get twitch, twitch, pause. I'll raise the, the rod up so you can see it, you know, elevating a little bit higher. So twitch, twitch, pause. And again, this is a, this is a really effective, uh, effective way on getting a fish that is really not that hungry, but, but it'll trigger the predator instinct to go after you know, the weak and injured prey. It looks like a scared shrimp or even it kind of mimics a, an injured fish as well. And so they'll just see that kind of action and, and sometimes just strike it just, again, just from their, their predator instinct. All right, so another case is if I'm fishing a, you know, grass flat uh, where this is really effective to, as well, but you have to keep it up out of the grass, otherwise you're gonna get snagged, is I'll keep my rod elevated a little bit more 
and I'll, I'll kind of half swim it and then give it some bumps or I kind of bounce it right off the, uh, the tops of the grass. But where it's most effective is I'll, I'll do that and then as soon as there's a pothole, I just let it fall. I let it fall right into the bottom of that pothole, I let it sit, and then I do that, that double twitch motion, right? Twitch, twitch, pause, because most of those predators will be using those potholes to, uh, to ambush prey. And so they're just sitting there, they'll see that lure come up, they'll see it sit down, and in many cases do that little twitch, and that's gonna get the strike. Yeah, a lot of people do put these like underneath a popping cork, right? They'll have the pop, popping cork, you know, about you know, two to three feet above the bait, and, uh, and they use the popping cork to, to create noise, or to create noise on the water to attract the fish, and usually they'll look up and see the, uh, you know, the shrimp underneath. That's an effective way to fish. I personally prefer to, to not use that so that I can actually control, especially again, if I'm fishing a grass flat, I want to be able to cast over the pothole, work it above, work it above, and then let it fall and get into the pothole. Because when you have a popping cork, you can't control the depth, right? You can't customize the depth in the middle of a cast. And so I find that I catch the biggest fish when I'm not using the popping cork. And when I, as long as I can see the potholes, that's typically the, my favorite way. But if it's really murky water, like for out in Texas or Louisiana and, and really murky water, the popping cork is, is really a good way to do it because that popping cork will make a lot of racket on the surface. Those fish will look up, see what's going on, and then see that bait, smell that bait, and come up and strike it. All right, well, those are the, the methods that I found works best for generating strikes when using these gulp shrimp. If you are having trouble consistently catching fish, most often it's not the lure. Right, that's a, it's an easy cop out. Um, I've been teaching fishing for many years now, and 99% of the time, the, the problem isn't the lure, it's, it's being at the right spot at the right time. That's what people aren't doing properly. I struggled for many years, I know what it feels like. And so we put together this fishing club, the Salt Strong Fishing Club, where that's what we focus on. We focus on the trends, on real-time information. We share that with the members, and now we have a report system where members can, can share their reports as well, and it's really all about making sure that the club members are, are on the right spots at the right time because 90% of the fish are living in about 10% of the water at any given time. So it's all about finding that 10% of the water. And when you do that properly, the actual lure that you're using doesn't matter nearly as much. So if you'd like to learn more about that and, and, and see how to get started, I'll put a link down below. But otherwise, yeah, thank you so much for your time and watching this video. I hope you can get on the water soon and catch some big ones.